Hey there, Life Church family. Pastor Mitch here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, just outside on our screened in porch and enjoying this weather and actually taking a break from sermon prepping. We're going to be going live online tomorrow at 10 a.m. You can go to lifechurchohio.com to watch that. But again, just taking a, bre uh, a break from that prepping and just been thinking through uh, recently in, in the last few days and, and praying about uh, the crazy unfortunate events uh, surrounding George Floyd and that brutal death and uh, just the violence that we're seeing in the aftermath and uh, people's reaction of frustration and anger and calling out for justice. And um, it, my heart is breaking. And, and, and also there's, there's a bit of confusion or unknown. How do I respond? And I believe God keeps saying a, a few things over and over. Uh, he keeps bringing, keeps bringing in mind one verse, that's Ephesians 4, uh, and it just says, In your anger, do not sin. So he's saying, uh, are you allowed to be angry about, at the injustice? And, and, and when we see sin and things that don't line up with the Word of God, are we allowed to be angry? Absolutely. Be angry, but in your anger, do not sin. We have an obligation to, to, to direct those emotions, those feelings uh, in a positive way that reflects the, the true nature and love of God. So in your anger, don't sin. And then it goes on to say, for if you do, you're going to give Satan a stronghold. And, and I feel like I'm seeing a lot of that, that, that people are reacting in sin with that anger that they feel. And so I want to encourage us uh, to, to actually look the other direction I'll talk about here in a sec. Uh, but I also, uh, the verse, James chapter 1, uh, James is the brother of Jesus. And in that, we're, we're kind of instructed to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And again, there's just a comfort that God knows we're going to be angry, but just that we need to control that anger. We need to focus it. And then why? It goes on to say there right after that, that the, the anger of man does not bring about the righteousness of God. That as we sinfully uh, project our anger, it, it will not bring about righteousness in other people's lives and absolutely not in our own. So we have to learn to control and focus our, our angst and, and that uncertainty and that even that anger in such a positive way that we reflect God. So what is that way? I think it simply comes down to just the word love. And Paul talks about in his letter, letter to the Corinthians that love is patient and kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not easily angered. Uh, it, it doesn't rejoice in sin and all, the, all kinds of different things that love, what love can do and, and drive out. And I believe that's our calling right now is just to love. At the end of that, it says love never fails. And then even further down there, I, I think Paul sums it up great what God was telling him. Hey, I don't know anything, but three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And Jesus himself, uh, when asked, what is the greatest commandment in, in, that you know of? And Jesus, I, I believe very quickly said, easy, love God, the Lord your God, with all of your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength, everything you got. And then the second one is exactly like the first, a little bit different. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love others. Now, I know that's not a real practical thing of, of go out and do X, Y, and Z, and then you accomplish love. Love is an interaction. It's a, it's a continual conversation with God of how can I love, be loving you, God? How can I love my neighbor? And so in that conversation, that prayer, I believe God is very practical. He's not going to give you a command without uh, the, the means to accomplish it. So as we pray, you know, and, and seek God, that we would, the, the greatest commandment, love God and love others. But love is also our greatest weapon. That as we, we get real practical in our love for people, that, that we serve and, and, and we share meals and uh, we share finances and whatever giftings and, and, and resources God has given you, as we give those to our neighbors, our literal neighbors, our neighbors in the community and surrounding areas, um, our, our neighbor can mean a lot of different things. As we love on our neighbor in a practical way, that will drive out hate and violence and racism. It's one act of service at a time to one person, one family, just reaching out, loving God, loving our neighbors. So 
that's where I landed on all of this. I would love to hear where you are with it as well. You can email me, uh, Mitch at LifeChurchOhio.com. And yeah, let's start a conversation. Uh, I love you guys. Hope to see you tomorrow again, 10 a.m., LifeChurchOhio.com. Have a great day. See ya.